The Yamaha DTX-10K kit is Yamaha's most recent flagship electronic drum set, and unlike most brands at this level, it comes with two options for the playing surfaces. The 10KX uses Yamaha's own textured cellular silicone, or TCS heads, on the snare and toms, and the 10KM has mesh heads on all of the drum pads. Yamaha very kindly sent me the 10KM model to try out and to make this review video. It's already gone back to them, and as always, full disclosure, all views in this video are based on my own experience with this kit. The mesh version of the kit is the cheaper of the two models by around £600 in the UK, €600 Euros in Europe and around $500 in the US. I believe that that's because the TCS material is more expensive to produce. However, every other aspect of these two kits is identical, so if you do like the look of this kit, I'd recommend trying out both surfaces if you're able to, to figure out which one you prefer. The drum heads are fitted onto short stack shells that come in either black or real wood finishes. I'm personally a big fan of the real wood finish and I think it creates a more striking impression, but neither of the finishes feels cheap. The pad sizes across the kit are 12 inch for the snare and floor tom, 10 inch for the rack toms, a 12 inch kick pad, 13 inch hi-hats, 13 and 15 inch crashes and a 17 inch ride. The DTX Pro X module powers the kit and it comes with a very sturdy rack setup, plus a snare stand and a hi-hat stand. These two stands are decidedly more lightweight than the rack, but it's really nice to see them included because most manufacturers typically don't supply these with the kits and you would have to buy them separately. All of the hardware on the rack is high quality Yamaha gear and it's all rock solid. There are memory locks supplied and even a spirit level as part of the logo block which is really useful. The main rack lamps have these sleeve inserts which allow for smooth 360 degree adjustments, though I did find the module mount a little bit more awkward to position because it didn't have this feature. All of the provided cables are also clear which means that they blend into the rack nicely. One of the main considerations for a kit like this is deciding whether or not these pad sizes are what you're looking for. Not everybody wants big pads, but nowadays these are on the smaller side for a kit around this price range. In the UK at least, the Roland VAD506 is only a few hundred pounds more than this kit, and it comes with a 14 inch snare and floor tom, a second rack tom that's 12 inch, a 20 inch kick drum, and the crashes and ride are all an inch bigger. The F Note 5X is very close in price, and the F Note 7 is only a few hundred more and both of these have larger cymbals and at least some larger drum pads. However, I do think that those kits have a little bit of a different target audience. The DTX 10K kits definitely appear to be aimed at people who want a bit more of a compact but still sturdy pad setup with some premium features, though admittedly the rack is pretty hefty for a compact kit. But in this case, at current prices, that means it's sitting somewhere between the Roland TD27KV, which is significantly cheaper, has a larger snare and ride, but smaller toms, kick pad and cymbals, and the Roland TD50K2, which is a fair bit more expensive, but it has Roland's flagship module, similar tom sizes to the 27KV, but a larger kick drum and larger cymbals. So the 10K is in an interesting position, both price and size wise. It will definitely check the right boxes for some people, but you do have to weigh up the rest of the features too, which I'll get into shortly. Before I get into the functionality, let's have a look at the feel and the triggering. Unfortunately, I can't really go into depth about the feel of the TCS version. I really enjoyed my brief time with it at the UK drum show, and that surface has a very unique feel, but I didn't really use it for long enough to be able to accurately come to a conclusion about it. For the 10KM though, the mesh pads on this kit do feel really good. There are two ply mesh made by Remo, who co-developed the first mesh head, so they're quality heads. If you've used any other brand of electric 
electronic drums it'll be a really familiar feel, and although I do personally prefer 3-ply heads on my own kit, these are definitely on par with the competition. Underneath the heads of this mesh version, I actually ran into an unexpected discovery. As some of you might already know, the new Yamaha XP125SD M snare pad is using the 3 cone trigger setup that was recently popularised by ATV and adopted by pretty much every other major manufacturer. Having done my homework, I knew this going in, and I assumed that this was the trigger setup for the toms as well. However, it isn't. The two 10 inch toms and the 12 inch floor tom pad all contain one single side trigger located towards the bottom right of the head. I never actually noticed this until I'd taken the heads off. The trigger response felt exactly as I expected. But interestingly, I've not seen anybody else mention this anywhere online, and I'm pretty sure that the assumed consensus in the community was that all of these pads had the same trigger setup. Even the deep dive video for the kit only talks about the three cone setup in the new pads. As I say, in in terms of playability, I don't actually think that this is a problem, it's just interesting that that's been overlooked. Overall, the trigger response has been good, but there have been a couple of little twists and turns in my experience, purely because this kit isn't a brand new out-of-the-box kit. It's a prototype kit that's been shipped around for trade shows and reviews. The first snare pad that came with the kit actually had a broken solder joint somewhere on one of the piezos inside, which was leading to a dead response after a hard hit. However, Yamaha were super quick to get replacement pads to me. I was very promptly sent a brand new boxed real wood finish snare to get me back up and running, and then I was sent another prototype of the black finish snare so that I would have a matching pad for this video. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have brought this up at all, but I found that the final retail pad, the real wood one, actually gave me a better trigger response than the prototype black snare did. Three cone triggers do have some slight quirks anyway, they're designed to remove the centre hotspot that plagues centre cone triggers, but they're not completely hotspotless. They have three mild hotspots directly over the cones, and sometimes you get a little bit of a drop off towards the edge of the pad if you're playing right between the cones. It's not exclusive to these Yamaha pads, however it was a little bit more apparent on the prototype snare, and the rim response was also more even on the final product too. I took a look inside both, and the prototype's rim sensor is towards the edge of the pad, whereas the finished pad's rim piezo is right in the centre, so to me that behaviour makes sense. I'm actually really thankful to have had the chance to try the finalised pads, because if I hadn't, I might have been a little bit more critical of the triggering. However, I can be assured from this experience that the versions that people will actually buy will have the superior trigger response. The DTX Pro X module does support positional sensing on the snare input, however it's only only supported with the TCS pads. I do think that it's a shame though that the rim on the mesh pads only has one true articulation. There's no distinction between playing on just the rim or hitting a rim shot like there is on a flagship Roland module, the Pearl Mimic Pro or the audio front eDrum In. If you want a dedicated cross stick and rim shot zone, you have to use the TCS pad. When using mesh pads, there is an X stick button that you can enable, so a soft hit gives you a cross stick and a hard hit gives you a rim shot, and you can set the velocity value for this, but it's not really the same feature. For the toms, the single cone trigger setup plays well, and the rim response is good.
To be honest, I've always found single side triggers to be really consistent, especially when the pads are on the smaller side. The kick drum pad feels nice and it triggers as well as you would expect. When I first set it up it did move around a little bit but once I had it seated properly and dug it into the carpet it all felt solid enough. It also comes with a kick patch which is really nice to see. The symbols on this kit are mostly well established Yamaha pads. The RHH135 hi-hat, PCY135 and PCY155 crashes have all been staples of Yamaha's lineup for years and they all play very well. The PCY175 is a new pad, but it's very much just a scaled up version of the others. The crashes and ride are all three zone. This is great and it should be a standard feature across the market in my opinion. And the ride also supports positional sensing from the edge to the bell, which works really well. Unfortunately though, I have found the PCY175 more difficult to choke than the other symbols. If I'd only used this 175 pad, I'd have just chalked this up to the kit being a prototype that's been put through the ringer. The 155 symbol on this kit, for example, has clearly been beaten a lot and it's pretty misshapen, but that hasn't really affected its trigger performance. However, I do actually own a PCY 175 symbol that I bought when they first released individually, and it has the same behaviour as the one on this kit. I'm not quite sure why this is, and I haven't really seen anybody else mention this either, but it does seem to be consistent on both of the PCY175 symbols that I've used. Otherwise though, these symbols are solid, if maybe a little bit unremarkable. They don't have 360 degree triggering like F-Note or ATV, and they're not digital like some of the Roland symbols, but they do a great job besides this one small issue on the ride. They do actually choke 360 degrees though, which I rarely see come up. The symbols all use these rotation stoppers that are small posts that go through a hole in the symbol, and although they're not really my favourite aesthetically, they do the job just fine. Setting up all of these triggers is pretty simple going thanks to the kit preset option. You can go into this menu and then just select the kit that you have, and it will pick all of the correct pads. Then you can further customise the triggering of all of the pads with plenty of settings including a really big range of velocity curves, and some pretty handy minimum and maximum level and velocity functions if you really want to fine tune the bottom or top end of your trigger response. You can choose whether the inputs are split in the trigger settings and you can also store up to 10 different user trigger banks in case you ever want to move this module between different pad setups. Interestingly, you can actually link these trigger banks to an individual kit preset too, which is pretty cool. So the robust trigger engine works really well with Yamaha's pads, but what if you want to use pads from another manufacturer with this module? Some mesh triggers will be supported pretty well. There's a great video on Simon Edgoose's channel showing how to dial in some ATV pads and a D-drum trigger. However, you'll probably run into problems if you want to use Roland pads or triggers, or another brand pad that outputs at a similar level to Roland's pads. These pads will be too hot on the DTX Pro X module, and by extension, most Yamaha modules. Even with the gain set to zero, I max out the trigger with a pretty weak hit.
Of course, this is understandable. You want to make sure that your trigger engine is optimised for your own pads. The downside of this, though, is that smaller manufacturers in particular aim for Roland compatibility. They're kind of seen as the industry benchmark, which means that their pads end up with a similar output level to Roland's own pads, therefore they'll struggle on a Yamaha module. I have a lot of different triggers in the workshop, and unfortunately almost all of them suffer from the same problems when I connect them to the Pro-X module. In contrast, plugging Yamaha drum pads into a Roland module works fine because you can just crank the gain up. You might also find that you're a bit more limited for choice when it comes to three zone cymbals. Yamaha's three zones over one cable approach is brilliant for their own pads and for their modules, but a lot of third party pads are made with the Roland style two cable approach for three zones, which means that you won't get full functionality with this module. You could resolve this with an adapter cable like this Zorman one with a resistor inside which turns a two jack cymbal into a single cable. I reviewed this on the channel a while ago and it works really well. On the flip side, Yamaha cymbals are really well priced if you do want to expand this kit, and hopefully that will translate to the mesh pads too. Of course, not everybody will need to connect a wide variety of triggers to this kit, but I do think that when you've got a fair few modules on the market now with universal pad compatibility, it's a bit of a shame when the bigger companies don't try harder to expand their compatibility. The module was one of the things that interested me most about this kit when I first saw it. It's a decent step up from the DTX Pro module that comes with the DTX 6K and 8K kits in some ways, but not necessarily in others. The most obvious steps up are the additional controls on the front of the module. The Pro X has an abundance of features that are easy to access with a combination of these dials up at the top, the rotary faders along the bottom, and the physical faders over to the right. With the top dial, you can very quickly swap between kits, metronome, trigger settings, the recorder and the set list options. Along the bottom you can use the rotary faders in many ways, as a mixer to choose your instruments, to adjust the tuning, muffling and effects, and also to adjust a bunch of additional functions. Like on the DTX Pro module there's even a dedicated section for the metronome with its own screen and controls. On the back of the module there are the same number of trigger inputs as the DTX Pro module. Snare, three toms, ride, two crashes, hi-hat and hi-hat controller, kick and an additional input. It's a shame that they didn't add more inputs for this Pro X module, but many of these can be split with a simple Y cable and a change of settings. The fact that the kick input can be split is great, this is often just a single zone input on other modules, and there's even a pad input jack built into the kick pad, so you don't actually have to use a splitter cable. There's also a DIN MIDI in socket, quarter inch AUGS input and some direct outputs which were absent on the DTX Pro, and then a MIDI out and the master outputs. The direct outputs are four stereo jacks, but these can be split into a total of eight direct outputs. There's also a USB-A port for external storage like a USB thumb drive, and a USB-B port for hooking up to a computer. The module can use MIDI over USB with a PC or Mac without a driver, or you can install the driver on a Windows PC to use the audio interface functionality. Unfortunately, you only get a stereo master output mix over USB, which is a bit of a shame for a module at this level. The Roland TD27 allows up to 28 tracks and the TD50X has up to 32. On the flip side, you can hook up the DTX Pro X with a smart device with this USB port and use the module alongside the Rec and Share app to easily record audio and video performances, which is really cool. Around the front of the module, there's also an 8th inch AUGS input and both a quarter and 8th inch headphone jack, so you can use either size connectors for both. The module also supports Bluetooth for audio input so that you can play along with tracks, which is another really handy function. One very big similarity to both the DTX Pro and the EAD10 hybrid trigger module is the kit modifier dials. They're so simple in principle, but somewhat of a masterstroke for fast sound design.
There are plenty of other modules that give you either an ambience dial or fader, but I particularly like how this one works. With the onboard sounds and the stock settings, you're controlling the real room microphone level up to halfway up the dial, and then it will start adding digital reverb or ambience past the halfway point. A dial for compression is not a common feature on other modules, which is crazy because it's so useful. The third dial for effects is also really fun, and I think I've only really seen it on something else like the Roland TM6 Pro, not their actual drum modules. One area that the DTX Pro X doesn't seem to improve that much over the lower end DTX Pro is in the sounds department. There are almost the same number of sounds in the Pro X as there are in the Pro module, only an extra 21 instruments along with an extra 30 kit presets. Apparently the instruments contain more sample layers and a higher fidelity of sound in the Pro X than they do in the Pro, but to be honest it doesn't seem to be particularly noticeable. Beyond that though, the onboard kit and stock sounds are pretty great overall and it's really easy to quickly find some fun kits to play out of the box, especially compared to some modules on the market. There's also a pretty wide range of electronic and percussion sounds. And because the kit modifiers that I talked about before are so quick and versatile, you can get quite a few variations of every kit very easily without truly diving into any menus. If you do want to dive into the menus though, you're not short of options. The first thing that I needed to keep in mind is that instruments and voices are treated as two separate things. Effectively, the instruments are the whole sound. So you choose a snare from the instrument selection and that will bring with it the head, the rim and the cross stick articulations all grouped as one instrument. On the other hand, a voice is just one constituent part. So the head of a snare is one voice, the rim is another and the cross stick is another. And both instruments and voices can be edited independently of each other if you want to. Although you won't find settings like Roland's modelling approach with shell depths and head types and things like that, there are plenty of advanced options that you can use to get creative with if you start digging into the voice settings. Things like assigning different sounds to each pad zone, layering up various sounds, or using your own multi-layer samples can be done with these controls. There are a pretty surprising amount of things that you can do at this level. Every pad zone can layer up to four voices each, and you can adjust exactly how these play back. You can stack them, meaning that they all play together, or you can alternate them, having them play in sequential order. It's this sequential mode that lets you create a round robin effect when you're using your own multi-layered samples. You can also loop a voice with the voice hold mode which lets you start or stop it by hitting the pad. You can then tweak things like the tuning, the decay and even a filter here to modify these at the voice level before any of the instrument controls are then applied on top. It's really customizable and you can create some interesting instrument combinations with all of these settings.
Back at the instrument level there are plenty more settings including an adjustable 3 band pad EQ, transient adjustment options which are a really powerful tool for shaping how immediate things sound, compression settings and insert effects which are another level of effect on top of the kit modifiers master effects. I really like how you can dial in exactly how you want each effect to work. You can even customise the response curve of the kit modifier dial so that they react differently at a different point of the dial. That is just so much granular control that you just don't get on most modules and that's really welcome for a serial tweaker like me. That said, because there are a lot of options, many of these might pass by the average user or even become a little bit complicated to keep track of, especially due to the interface of the module. And that's a theme that will pop up again later. But even without all of these crazy settings, the onboard sounds, the acoustic kits especially, do have a very particular sonic character. And for the most part, I do really like what the module has to offer. The punchy rock kits in particular sound big, exciting and cutting, but they also sound good when you strip them right down to the raw unprocessed sounds. If I was being really nitpicky though, this is due to most of the sounds feeling quite transient heavy. Now this is a hard one to explain but it feels like the soft hits are more similar to a medium level hit. And I don't mean the volume that comes out, that can be adjusted, rather it's the character of the attack of the sample. I've talked about the difference between hearing a sound and feeling a sound when you're playing electronic drums before in a very early video on the channel, and it can make a massive difference to our experience when playing. So definitely listen to as many examples of this kit as you can to make sure that you like the sounds, but ideally I would say try playing it as well just to make sure that it actually feels how you want it to feel, because this stuff is really subjective. For more advanced users, this kit keeps on delivering with quite a few great features that either aren't in other modules or just aren't done as well as they are on the DTX Pro X. I'll try not to get too deep into the ins and outs of them here, but highlights include the voice layering features that I mentioned earlier, with up to four different voices per pad zone, and also some pretty complex MIDI controls that are related to this functionality. You can set up different MIDI notes for each of these voices, which means that you can swap between MIDI notes on one pad zone by velocity, or even send them all at once for triggering multiple sounds from another device. You can even change the MIDI notes to CC data by setting up one of the pad functions instead. These make the Pro X a pretty solid option as a MIDI controller, and that's nice in an electronic drum world that seems pretty hell-bent in stripping out a lot of those features in recent years. The other pad functions are all pretty handy as well if you want to use a dedicated pad for toggling between kits, changing the tempo, controlling the click or song play, Player, turning the ambience on or off and things like that. There are some nice routing features including different orgs input modes, various controls for the individual outputs, some preset routing setups, bypasses for different effects on different outputs, and a separate master and headphones EQ. I briefly mentioned earlier that you can import user samples and even create full multi-layered user instruments on this module. This is another great feature, however it's hamstrung a little bit by some limitations that stop it from being quite as exciting as it should be. The first is that this module only has about 256 megabytes of onboard storage for your samples. If you're only importing one-shot samples like you might do on a Roland module, then there's plenty of room for a decent amount of them. But if you do want to start making your own multi-layered instruments, the sample room will start disappearing pretty fast. On top of this, actually setting up this feature is really long-winded and just not very user-friendly. If you do want to know more about about it, there's a video on Simon Edguse's channel which shows off the full process for setting up your USB stick, importing samples to voices and then building your own instruments. I did this for two user voices with seven samples in each and then I just stopped because it was so boring.
It's annoying because it did play pretty well and I can see the potential there but it's just not a fun process. This should be a great feature that's both a selling point and makes the module more competitive but it's just too limited. But that's all set up to a larger problem that I mentioned earlier. Once you get deeper into the menus of this module, the user interface starts to feel pretty cumbersome overall. The combination of the small screen, their menu structure and the layout of the controls around the screen just didn't really gel well for me. Of course, I'm no stranger to the annoying trend of tiny screens across the electronic drum market, but there's something particularly fiddly about Yamaha's menu setup to me which only makes things more frustrating when there's such a wealth of advanced options available. Also, you have to manually save all of your changes by hitting the store button and I'm never a big fan of that. The focus of the user interface experience definitely seems to have been on these tactile dials and controls, seemingly in an effort to allow people to buy pass interacting with the awkward menu system on the tiny screen if they want to. So if you think that the dials will be your main method of interacting with this module then you'll probably still have a pretty easy time of it. So is this kit worth buying? Yeah, it's a great kit. It feels solid, it sounds great, it looks good, and it has a mix of easy to use features for people who just want to play, and some pretty in-depth features for those who want to dive deeper. The main limiting factors for some people will probably be the price and the size. If you really like the sounds of this module but you don't need all of the features and you're happier with a smaller kit, you might find more value in something like the DTX 6K3X or the DTX 8KM. But if this kit does hit the right balance of form factor, functionality and sounds for you, then there's a lot of fun to be had with it and it's some pretty serious gear that should last you a long time. If you enjoyed this review, why not check out one of the other reviews on my channel. If you want new kits or samples for your electronic drum module, check out my store at theedrumworkshop.com, but above all, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!